Mr. President, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we'll be talking about around the country and around the world tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the 75th anniversary of D-Day. There aren't a lot of days known in history around the world by just one letter, but June 6, 1944 is known that way. It's the greatest amphibious battlefield landing ever uh, and probably the single greatest military operation in history. It was done to liberate people in Europe from one of the most savage regime, regimes uh, that ever existed. Uh, 15 minutes past midnight, 18,000 paratroopers began to step out of their planes high above Normandy, France, going in behind uh, what would be the landing the next day. Below them, there were about 2,000 people streaming toward the continent on almost 7,000 ships, uh, with about a million others to follow after that landing was made on D-Day. A journalist who wrote about the battle noted that by 4.30 that morning, the stars and, fly and stripes flew for the first time over a town liberated by Americans in France in World War II. So a lot happened from midnight to 4.30, but a lot more was going to happen that day. Americans led the operation, but there were also troops from Britain, from Poland, from Norway, from Canada, and even French troops returning to help free their own country were there. They were told that when you land in Normandy, you will have only one friend, God, and I'm sure there was lots of praying going on that day. It was known, became known in uh, literature and on film as the longest day, and it gave the Allies the threshold they needed to free the continent from the crush of the Third Reich. It was clearly chaos, uh, that many people doing that many things in that many different ways. Uh, there were missteps, there was bad luck, but in the end, there was an unimaginable amount of courage, of sacrifice, uh, and of just simple providence in what happened that day. When one landing group was landed in the wrong place, a place they weren't supposed to land, the commanding general, Theodore Roosevelt, who was the son of the former president, Theodore Roosevelt, told one of his officers just to keep on bringing the men ashore. He said, we're going to start the war from right here. It's not where they intended to be, but it's where they were, and their view and General Roosevelt's view that day was where we are is where we're going to start, that this is, uh, there's no going back now, and they didn't go back. One of the men who joined the fight that day, and there were millions who would eventually, and thou hundreds of thousands that day, uh, was Ralph Goldsticker from Creve Corps, Missouri. Uh, he'd signed up for the Army Aviation Cadet Corps right after Pearl Harbor. Uh, he said when talking about this later, his parents were scared silly when they found out that he had signed up immediately to become a flyer in what would become World War II. He flew 35 missions as a bombardier in a B-17 flying fortress, including two missions on D-Day. His first mission that day was to help take out the big German guns that guarded the beach where British troops were landing. He remembers the skies being so thick with airplanes that he had to fly from southern England all the way back to Scotland just to get in line to head to France. Later that afternoon, he flew a second mission to attack German reinforcements who were headed for the beaches. Ralph was awarded the Medal of French of the French Legion of Honor in recognition of his service. Now, you know, he was just one, Mr. President, of thousands of Missourians, from the lowest private to General Omar Bradley, who was commanding the American troops, who were part of that day, and many of them would never return. We just uh, had a series of votes a little earlier than we would normally have in the week because. Seven, 17 or so of our colleagues are going to be part of the D-Day celebration on this 75th anniversary. I had an opportunity myself to be in Normandy a few years ago when we were at Normandy at the Norman American Cemetery where there were 7,000 graves out in front of us. And our guide that day on what was a private trip, not a government trip, we were fortunate to have a 
a, a good guide who understood the war and the cemetery, took us through the cemetery, then took us over and set us down, Mr. President, on a stone wall with the uh, English Channel to our back and those 7,000 graves out in front of us. And as we sat there in that spot, he flipped open his computer, and on, the, on his computer he had some video of General Eisenhower and Walter Cronkite sitting exactly on that same spot, uh, June the 6th, 1964, the 20th anniversary of D-Day. And General Eisenhower, who of course gave the orders in spite of weather and other things and hoping it would work out as it was supposed to uh, for what happened on D-Day and what happened later, uh, said to Walter Cronkite something like this. He said, uh, you know, Walter, my son John graduated from West Point on D-Day. And he said, many times over the last 20 years, I've thought about he and his wife and the family they've had and the opportunities they've had. And I've thought about these young men, Eisenhower looking at those graves. I've thought about these young men and what they didn't get to do because of what they were asked to do. That, by the way, Mr. President, was the same commanding general who had that famous note in his wallet that day where he would uh, take full responsibility for what happened if it didn't go well. Uh, and that was the kind of leader he was. But, you know, he, he was told by those paratroopers, I mentioned there were 18,000 paratroopers, he was told that 70% of those paratroopers would not survive the day. There's a statue here in the rotunda of this building that's based on a photo of Eisenhower the day before D-Day, surrounded by those young paratroopers. And they were 18 and 19 and 20 and maybe even a few younger than 18 surrounding him. And they'd been told he wouldn't want to talk to them, but when he got there, it was obvious he was there to see them. Uh, and that uh, statue, Mr. President, in the rotunda shows a Eisenhower's making a gesture that nobody knew for years what that particular hand gesture was, but it turns out he was talking to a young man from Idaho, and he was talking about fly fishing. So that gesture, if you're touring this building and go look at the Eisenhower statue, this is Eisenhower the day before D-Day, talking about a young man, talking to a young man about fly fishing, and he'd been told that again, 70% of those paratroopers would not survive the day because of what he and others were asking them to do. Numbers weren't that bad, but they turned out to be plenty bad. The Germans had uh, released water in the area behind Normandy uh, in an unexpected way. So many of those paratroopers that expected to go into land went into flooded land and, got, and, and uh, drowned and other things happened uh, that couldn't have been planned for and weren't planned for, but they were there to do that job. The fighting that first day, D-Day, Mr. President, paved the way for more men to come ashore, and it began the long push through France into Germany uh, and for them into history. I think there will be maybe slightly more than a dozen D-Day survivors at that 75th anniversary you don't have to do the math on that very long to know that if you were in the military on D-Day, uh, you'd be in your 90s today, and they're going to be there with our colleagues and others celebrating what they did and what they were willing to do. One observer wrote on D-Day, there never had been a dawn like this one. 700 ships, 200,000 people, ready to land and establish the beginning of the end of World War II. So today we remember again the sacrifice of those thousands of soldiers and sailors and airmen. Uh, we honor their courage and their devotion to the cause of liberty. We serve them by continuing to remain strong and preparing to fight for freedom everywhere. That means doing all we can for the men and women who defend us today. It means we carry the legacy of the generations that fought 75 years ago on D-Day and every other war where Americans have fought and died. They deserve our gratitude today and every day.
We need to continue to understand the importance of our alliances and our willingness to stand for freedom. Uh, and this is a great uh, day and a great, great week to be reminded of that, Mr. President.